right, good morning everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, today we are doing the unofficial uh, unveiling of the automatic license plate readers here in the Northwest San Fernando Valley, specifically Council District 12. Uh, today we're going to speak about the technology, explain how it works, how LAPD uses it, uh, and at the end we'll leave some time for questions and answers. So again, uh, thank you all for joining us today. I am John Lee, the council member of the 12th District here in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, today we have with us today LAPD Chief Dominic Choi, David Wilson, who is the Public Safety Technology Advisor for Motorola, Sam Kiosian and Ma Martha Casares, uh, CD12 neighbors who live just who will be sharing their experiences having their homes burglarized and shedding a light on why this program is so incredibly important. Uh, the residents of my district uh, and actually the city as a whole, I think you're going to see that this technology is what uh, really moved LAPD to that next level. All of us here today know that Los Angeles has consistently seen crime throughout the city become more brazen, more organized, and public. Today we're standing on Rinaldi Street, which goes all the way through Council District 12 and has literally been a line that shows you where crimes are most likely to happen in my district. Last year, the Devonshire Division uh, reported that the homes and communities located north of this very street uh, experienced a 103% increase in home burglaries. And even more broadly, the Los Angeles Police Department Devonshire Division reported a 23% increase in burglaries across their entire division last year. To me, when I hear that news, the data is simply unacceptable, and it's what brings us here today. Over the course of the last year and a half a million dollars in funding from my office, city departments, LAPD included, began purchasing and working on a plan to install 100 automated license plate reader cameras, or better known as AOPRs, as they're most commonly referred to, throughout the communities that I represent at Porter Ranch, Chatsworth, Northridge, Granada Hills, West Hills, and North Hills. As of today, we have successfully identified all the locations where these cameras will be installed uh, and have already installed over two dozen cameras in key locations. By the end of this year, these communities will be protected by 100 strategically placed automatic license plate readers. Just south of this intersection, you will find one of the first locations to be equipped with this technology. Those cameras just on the other side of the street are part of the larger network that in just after a few days after being installed have already helped the LAPD make two arrests, uh, which we can tell you more about later on. ALPRs are technology already used by law enforcement agencies throughout the country that help find patterns in the incoming and outgoing traffic of a specific area. And ultimately, they have played a vital role in narrowing the search for uh, s specific suspects. Automatic license plate readers are not a new technology uh, for the LAPD, and the department already has a robust data policy specifically related to the use of this type of tool. What is new, however, is the implementation of this technology on our city streets and to cover an entire council district. And while there are a few that exist in very specific locations around the city, like at the port, I am proud to say that this part of Los Angeles will be the first and currently the only district in the city of Los Angeles to benefit to having these cameras installed at fixed locations throughout the district. When a vehicle passes through an area equipped with AOPRs and their license plate is on a hot list, officers throughout the city and importantly in our local police divisions will be immediately notified. If that vehicle passes through another area that they're also equipped with AOPRs, Officers will then again be notified every single time that vehicle drives past one of our ALPR. Officers will know exactly where the particular car has been and poten potentially where they are going. These cameras are going to be a powerful tool will, which will undoubtedly bolster the capabilities of our law enforcement partners and aid in their investigative reports to hold people accountable for their crimes. These cameras do not know any basic details beyond the vehicle information and license plate and thus represent police work that takes guessing out of the equation and is completely driven by data and real-time information. Let me also just say that it is important to note that this data and information is also extremely well protected by the data policies I mentioned earlier. 
Officers passively receive hits in their computer systems and off only a very specific group of investigators within the LAPD are able to actively engage the system to conduct searches. The data gathered by these cameras is eventually deleted unless required for prosecution, administrative hearings, and any potential misuse of the system, which is additionally safeguarded by the department's auditing division, which can analyze any request for information upon suspicion that it may have been misused. Many in my community know that I am a strong supporter of LAPD officers, and this tool is something that will undoubtedly make the department more efficient and improve its capability and con uh, to conduct investigations more efficiently. I want to take a moment to reiterate my commitment to my communities here in Council District 12. Everywhere throughout the city, we've seen smash and grabs, home burglaries, and blatant criminal activity take place in broad daylight. Communities everywhere have been asking for a change and pleading with their government uh, to address these issues. And while I know there is always more that we can do, it brings me immense hope to know that we've been able to deliver this project for the Northwest San Fernando Valley. These cameras represent modern policing. And when you consider our plans to launch real-time crime centers throughout Los Angeles, I can confidently say that we are finally giving the edge back to our police officers. To anyone looking to come into Council District 12 and target our communities, I strongly suggest you think twice about that decision. Our officers in Council District 12 are some of the most capable and committed you'll find anywhere in the city of Los Angeles. And now they've got one more tool to keep our neighborhoods safe and more importantly, criminals accountable. So with that, allow me to welcome LAPD Chief Dominic Choi, who has been an invaluable leader for communities everywhere throughout the city of Los Angeles. Chief. Thank you, Councilman. Well, good morning. First, I want to start by thanking Councilman John Lee for his unwavering support of both the community and law enforcement. As we work to expand the technological capabilities of the Los Angeles Police Department, I think we all know that technology touches all of us every day in all parts of our lives. And in public safety, it's not an exception. Uh, we have to expand our capabilities uh, through technology to do our job better and make communities safer. Expanding our infrastructure strengthens our investigative responsibility or abilities and improves public safety. A key part of this effort is the deployment of the ALPR technology. ALPRs allow for officers to scan and capture license plate data in real time, helping us identify vehicles associated with various criminal activities. Currently, the department has 1,500 vehicles with the ALPR capability in those vehicles. Every police vehicle with an in-car computer can receive alerts through the ALPR application, which provides notifications of crimes to include vehicles tied to wanted persons, stolen vehicles, and even missing persons. In addition to the ALPR-equipped vehicles, the department deploys eight ALPR-equipped, I'm sorry, in addition to the ALPR vehicles, the department deploys eight ALPR trailers. These are mobile ALPR locations that we can put in locations where we see a spike in crime, where there's consistent criminal activity. They, these trailers also send real-time alerts to the officers, either through the department-issued cell phones or directly to their police vehicles, ensuring that we can respond quickly potential, to potential threats and criminal activity. This technology is crucial as we continue to explore innovative ways to combat crime. Studies show that motor vehicles are involved na nationally in about 75% of all crimes, whether it's robberies, whether it's burglaries, whether it's human trafficking, whether it's murders, drive-by shootings, their mode of transportation is a vehicle. So it's so important that we can get information quickly to investigate and solve these crimes and even prevent these crimes. So this APR technology gives us a tool that we need to track down those involved more effectively and to build stronger cases with the data collected. Information captured by LPRs have been instrumental in solving a variety of crimes. Council member talked about a couple of crimes here locally that they solve, but in Southville, I can tell you that we've used our existing ALPR trailers and other not fixed post ALPRs, but other mobile ALPRs to solve a number of murders. 
also some high profile murders. I won't get into those details, but they, those AL, the AL, ALPR information was critical in creating leads for our investigators to follow up on and identify those involved in heinous violent crimes, as well as many property crimes. But that's why LAPD and this community, I'm sure, is so thankful, Council Member Lee, for your generous contribution because we all know that we're now able to install 100 ALPR cameras across 50 different locations in CD12. And I want to put this in perspective. Right now, we're going to, over the next year, well, few months, we will have 100 here in this look in CD12. Right now, total in the city of LA, LAPD, has 160, which means more than 60% of our ALPRs are here in this. I promise you, this is going to have an impact in crime in CD12. So thank you so much for. Um, really prioritizing public safety. So as we look into the future, I'm optimistic about what this expanded infrastructure means to public safety. This technology allows us to be more proactive in our pro approach to policing, giving us the tools we need to protect the community more effectively. With advancements like these, we are moving towards a smarter, more responsive way of keeping our city safe. I want to thank you all for your time. And now we're going to bring up some um, community members who have been affected by home burglaries. But before that, I want to also recognize the people that are standing behind me. Uh, not only is the chief here, but command staff from Oper Operation Valley Bureau, but importantly, uh, community members from my own district who are part of the volunteer community patrol teams. I'd like to thank them. I have my senior lead officers here as well standing behind me. These are the people that we partner with every single day to make sure that CD12 remains the safest district in the city of Los Angeles. And I'd like to personally thank them for all the hard work that they do every single day when they put on that uniform and badge. First, we're going to bring up one community member. His name is Sam Kiosian. Sam, can you join us and give a little? Hi, my name is Sam Kiosian. I was burglarized July of 2023. And when we came home, they were still at home and burglarizing my home. And it was a really bad, bad thing. I mean, I'm hoping no one goes through what we went through. And I really appreciate this city councilman, chief, police department, everyone that involved in this program that is helping us. We are really, really happy that this is, I hope this puts end up all this crime. Thank you very much. Sam Kiosian, K-E-O-S-E-I-A-N. First name is S-A-M. Thank you. And next, I'd like to bring up Martha Casares. Martha. Hi, good morning. My name is Martha Carrasco, and I've been living in this community for over 30 years. I just lived down the street from here, a couple blocks. Our home got vulgarized twice, once in 2016, and the second time just this year, April 19th. Both times, they took all our valuables. Um, the second time more, all my jewelry and but for the second time, we had actually gotten a safe, which we actually made it very easy because they took, they dragged the safe through my balcony and um, the police department estimated that the getaway car was just in front of our house. And they took the safe and they took uh, all of our valuables in, um, in our pillowcases. And so um, we're very, very grateful and appreciative of the LAPD, in particular the um, Devonshire Division, who have been very supportive through this process. And we're thrilled with this new program. And thank you, Councilman Lee and the LAPD. This is going to be fantastic. Uh, I think it's going to prevent and deter a lot of crime. Had these cameras been in place, uh, probably they would have cut you know, the robbers from my house, but I think it's phenomenal and we're very, very grateful that this is uh, gonna take place. Thank you, Councilman Thank Lee. You. C-A-R-R-A-S-C-O. Huh? En Español? Uh, mi nombre es Marta Carrasco y estoy viviendo en esta comunidad más de 30 años y mi casa fue robada dos veces. Thank you. 
So thank you. I appreciate you sharing your stories. And Un- you know, unfortunately, stories like hers, where her house was burglarized, um, I hear far too often. You know, I've lived in this community for 46 years now, and when I hear from my constituents, they're not just numbers on a paper. They are my neighbors. They are my friends. They are my family. And uh, you know, it's been frustrating to uh, you know deal with the issues that have been plaguing this city recently. You know, we are down 15, approximately, Chief, if and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, around 1,500 officers here in the city of Los Angeles, down 50 officers in Devonshire Division alone. That's an entire shift, but I will never use that as an excuse to not address the issues that are happening here in my district. And we will turn to technology and other ways to make sure that we keep District 12 the safest district in the city of Los Angeles, because I see no bigger responsibility that I have as council member than than I do to keep the members of this community safe. So thank you so much for joining us. Happy to take any questions from any of you out there. I can tell you that we have very strict policies on use and access. So everyone that has access to the AOPR data uh, the alerts, all officers will get the alerts because that's that's a real-time effort to get people, officers, to respond to crime. But to get into the system to have data, you have to have specialized training. Um, you have to have investigative purpose. It's the need to know, right to know. Um, we have an audit function, so we can access the system to see who logged on, who accessed it, when, where, what time. Um, and th- that system, that audit trail, will be audited, as Councilmember said, by we have an audit division, a whole division within LAPD that audits all our systems and access and, and compliance to our policies. And that will be done periodically. Um, we also have um, guidelines on purging data. So after two years, the data gets purged. It's available to the system administrators for up to five years. And after that, everything gets deleted. So there are robust systems in place to keep the system from being abused. Can I ask you, can you, I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. You don't have these license plate readers. Generally, you don't have very many at all in the city. Some mobile ones, you don't have them in the cars that are reading them, right? No, they are in the cars. All cars have a reader. 1,500 of the vehicles. 1,500 already, yes. and now these are scattered all over the city as well? Yes. Okay. And besides these for fixed location, there's some at the port, is that it? Besides the ones that are going to be installed here? I can't speak for uh, the Porter Airport. Um, I, I don't have that information, but I can just speak to what we have here. How many fixed cameras are there currently? 60. 60. Okay. You mentioned some, I know that investigations are ongoing, but can you just tell us a little more about cases that have been solved and discussed? So, so I actually, I have a whole slew of, uh, and I got it from South Bureau, murder cases uh, that actually the license plate information that came to from a license plate uh, ALPR database was instrumental in identifying the vehicle which then led to the identification of the people in the vehicle um, and there, there's a whole list of them uh, I even this morning I received at least five additional uh, homicides and so that's just the violent crime but property crime there there's probably I'm just guessing a lot more like I said earlier, you know, few days after installing just a few of the cameras, we already solved two different, uh, made arrests on two different robberies. I'd love for Captain Burns, who is my captain at Devonshire Division, to talk a little bit about the two arrests. Good morning, everyone. Um, as the councilman said, uh, within the last about week, week and a half, we did have a robbery. Um, one of them being at Costco that happened about two weeks ago. This was actually before the cameras were installed. But however, a vehicle was seen and based on the video that was collected at the uh, outside the Costco and what kind of robbery this was, was actually kind of a bait and switch where people are confronted in the parking lot with jewelry and somebody says they're going to give them a piece of jewelry and what they do in exchange is they take a piece of jewelry from their victim. And in this situation, they took a Rolex off an elderly man in the Costco parking lot. During the time of taking the Rolex, they did injure the man. Uh, the, the suspect then get into a vehicle and fled the location. Uh, based on some ALPR hits on the plate that we were able to get, 
Uh, we located that vehicle up outside in the county of Los Angeles. Uh, officers and detectives were able to do a follow up to that location, uh, locate the vehicle, locate the uh, where the suspect was. Um, she was in a motel there and she was subsequently arrested for that. Since that time, the same suspect has been identified in two other robberies in the valley. And that's how that's one example of how they've been really a true asset to us doing investigations. Another situation, we had our victim who was at the 7-Eleven. She had ridden up on an electric scooter. And again, this was just at the beginning of last week. Uh, she parked her scooter, entered the 7-Eleven, uh, during which time she looked outside, she saw the suspects in a vehicle pull up, the suspects exited their vehicle, tried to take her electric scooter. Uh, she ran out and confronted him, at which time our victim was punched in the face by one of the suspects in order to try to take that scooter from her. Uh, she fell to the ground after being punched, um, but however, she was able to hold on to her property. Uh, the suspects then entered their vehicle and fled. Luckily, due to, um, due to something in the license plate on the vehicle, which happened to be a stolen vehicle, and a lot of times as officers, we think, oh, we're not gonna be able to find that stolen vehicle with the suspects in it now. We were a couple days later due to an ALPR hit the vehicle was located down in the Northridge area. Um, at this point, uh, officers and uh, undercover officers and as well as officers in black and whites uh, set up on that vehicle. Once that vehicle was uh, left, they were able to eventually stop that vehicle and uh, detain both suspects who have both been filed on by the district attorney for robbery. Sure, my first name is Kathleen, K-A-T-H-L-E-N. Last name is Burns, B-U-R-N-S. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, oh, well, Chief, this is a to another story, but real quick, uh, there is a story about kids going into 7 Elevens, uh, committing robberies and bicycles, but now it's the mother telling on them to the police. What do you think about this action? Do you think it's good for the police? Is it a good message to the community that the mother is taking? Yeah, and I don't think it's what's good for the police. I think this is what's good for the community. These are parents holding their children accountable. I mean, the first, first line of, of um, ensuring that people are behaving civilly in the community is in the home and so when we see parents bringing children in and holding them accountable for their actions it's absolutely the right thing to do and i encourage that and i'm happy to see that all right thank you so much we'll be available individually for any requests from the media but again i'd like to thank you all for being here this is a technology that we are going to use to make sure that again that this district is going to use every tool to keep its residents safe because that is my number one responsibility as council member to keep my community safe so thank you so much for coming